For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello to everyone and welcome to the 10th issue of the People's Health Dispatch, where we bring news about health workers and about what's going on in the field of public health and global health. Uh, and today uh, we are talking to Lee Haynes, who is from People's Health Movement North America. And we're going to have a brief discussion about what has been going on in the US uh, when it comes to abortion care and reproductive rights. So hello, Lee. Welcome. Thank you, Anna. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and so uh, maybe we can just start from what has been going on over the weekend. And so apparently in Texas, there were quite a few mobilizations and uh, demonstrations by people. So could you, um, could you give us some updates on that? Yeah, um, I was really excited to see that the mobilizations there made um, international news, so that was really exciting. Um, in Texas, folks gathered at um, the state capitol in Austin, Texas, but also in cities around the state to protest the very restrictive abortion law that was recently passed in the state. And what was really exciting about the mobilization is that um, the mobilizations happen across the country because people, not just women, um, so looking at pictures, there were um, young women, older women, women, um, you know, of all races and classes, that, just looking at pictures. Um, but I was also very happy to see solidarity from men um, who understand the importance of reproductive rights and justice. And so, um, so people all across the country really recognized the threat to reproductive freedom and reproductive justice of this Texas law and how um, if it stands or continues to stand, then um, the rights of people in other states, um, particularly more conservative states like Texas uh, will be threatened. Thanks. So it actually sounds like a very good thing that happened over the weekend. Yeah, it was amazing. And so if, uh, if you look at what has been going on for the past few months, does it translate, does it correspond to what uh, was been going on? So has the mobilization been on for a while or have people taken to the streets before the law was introduced? Um, whenever, I mean, ever since, I think that there was kind of a, re, a resurgence of a women's movement, um, I don't want to say that a women's movement had sort of died out, but um, but there, whenever Donald Trump was elected into office, there was you know a huge women's march um, in Washington D.C. and in different places across the country, um, and those happen periodically. And so um, I think that part of this is definitely that momentum, um, but also. I'm thinking about the the Supreme Court and um, and the conservative lean of the court um, being against abortion, I'll say, and um, seemingly to be waiting for the opportunity to overturn law um, or case law that has upheld um, rights to abortion. I think that people really sense the urgency of that since Donald Trump's election. Um, and even now as at the state level, um, legislatures are controlled in many states by um, Republican, the Republican Conservative Party. 
And uh, so we have also heard, you know, when the law in Texas was introduced, it was also paralleled by different, let's say, trends in Latin American countries, for example, where uh, decriminalization was uh, was supported in many of, uh, of the parliaments and chambers. So that was interesting to see how, you know, the different trends happen so very close. Right. But also what I wanted to ask that, of course, uh, we have also heard that the abortion ban in Texas will have an, a very different impact on people of different classes. So mm -hmm. have, have there been any experiences or testimonies already on uh, how the ban, the ban will impact uh, like yeah. different people in different communities. Um, yeah, I think that just to say a little bit about the ban, um, which in case some people don't know, it's, um, and it's really interesting, as you say, considering the, the kind of international trend, because um, I know that Mexico recently um, basically legalized abortion and so, or decriminalized. And so what is, I guess the kind of um, strategic legal maneuver that the state of Texas has done is remove the duty from the state um, to kind of enforce, I guess, um, restrictions around abortion and has moved that duty to private citizens. So, a private citizen can sue, um, kind of bring a civil procedure against an individual, not necessarily, not the woman or the person who is having an abortion, but against anyone who may have helped her or helped the person have an abortion. So, um, so for example, if my neighbor, if I think my neighbor has had an abortion, then I can file a lawsuit against the doctor. I can file a lawsuit if they took a cab to the abortion clinic or who drove them there, I can file a lawsuit for up to $10,000 um, against that person. And so, um, and so the law kind of gives this power to private citizens to police what people are doing with their bodies. And when it comes to how this might differentially impact people, um, number one, and this is just from um, my, I guess, personal experiences growing up in Texas, I feel like there could be um, you know, a very racist, aspect to the law because there is a lot of policing of the bodies of people of color and so I could very much see um, a person a white person calling the police on my cousin or someone um, just out of racist stereotypes about um, and racist stereotypes and um, controlling of bodies of color um, there is also the um, the aspect of people not being able to afford leaving the state to get an abortion. So um, the law bans abortions before six weeks. So if a person, you know, number one, finds out that they're pregnant soon enough, then they have to leave the state of Texas um, to get an abortion. Well, I should say they should have to leave the state if they don't find out in time. So if they're past six weeks pregnant. Um, and Texas is full, is, you know, has a few urban centers where there are things like airports able to fly out of state, but that costs money. Um, where I'm from is a very rural area. The closest state um, where I, for example, could go get an abortion is about, it's Oklahoma, which is about um, eight hours or so away by car. Um, there's no the airport is like two hours away. So, um, so that really prohibits um, poor people from being able to access abortion, people who can afford a flight or afford gas or have a good car to get out of state um, would be able to go and access their abortion care. Um, so yeah, so I think that those are I mean, just not to be exhaustive, but um, but those are some of the main concerns that that people have about um, what this law has brought on. 
And you also mentioned that it will actually have a very, uh, a very concrete impact on not only the people who are going to who need the abortion, but also on those who assist them. So are there any signs or updates on what has been happening with abortion clinics? How, uh, how are they, their staff reacting? What, so what do they see as a response to what's going on now? Um, what I've seen and what I've heard is that, um, I mean, there's a lot of anger because the law isn't based on science or medicine. Um, there's the whole kind of, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but there's the kind of heartbeat debate and whether or not there is actually a heartbeat at six weeks and medical professionals say that what's heard on the ultrasound is not actually a heartbeat. So, um, so there's that reaction from, you know, kind of like the practice medical scientific um, standpoint. But then there's also doctors, um, nurses, healthcare workers who feel very strongly that this is unethical because um, there's no provision for protecting, for example, the life of the pregnant person um, or if it's uh, the um, person who needs an abortion is a victim of incest or rape, these people will be you know, ultimately forced to carry these babies until term if they don't find out they're pregnant um, in time to have an abortion. Um, there is recently one doctor did um, go ahead and do what he thought was best for his patient um, and performed an abortion after this six week cutoff period, if I can say it that way. Um, and there hasn't been any, like no one's filed any civil suit against him, but, um, but from a legal perspective, that's important or it's an important um, thing to have happened with this law because you know, it reached the Supreme Court already and the, the Supreme Court of the US um, refused to rule on kind of the constitutionality of the law because there's no state action required. It's all for private citizens. And so, um, so if somebody does, you know, file the civil suit against the law, against the doctor who performed the abortion, then this can kind of make its way through the courts in order to determine whether or not um, this abortion ban in Texas is legal and can stand or not. And so how does this impact what's happening in other states? Uh, have you seen any like um, shows of solidarity which are out, out of the ordinary or uh, can you see similar trends happening in other states and what is being done there? Um, well, I mean, the one trend, which is not a good trend, is that other states are emboldened to pass more restrictive abortion laws. For example, um, I believe it's in Mississippi where they have a law that's as restrictive or more restrictive as the Texas law. I'm sorry, I'm not um, sure of the details, but that law is... Um, going to be debate, debated and voted on in their legislature. And so there's a lot of um, outcry and protest um, of that law potentially passing. And I also think that the demonstrations over the weekend are a beautiful show of solidarity. Um, I know, I don't know, I think maybe people know that Texans, we get made fun of a lot. <laughs> and, um, and, and, yeah, on internet forums, it's very much like, ah, oh, Texans want to go their own way and they shouldn't have voted for these people if they didn't want to, you know, have that happen to them. Um, but it's that the kind of um, feeling of solidarity from the broader public in the U.S. Um, is, is, I feel it, it's very welcome. And so I think that um, people really do understand like the threat, um, not only for Texans, but also um, across the country. And finally, there, um, the lower house of the Congress, the House of Representatives of the US government um, has been talking about actually codifying abortion in statute. Right now, the right to abortion is protected only um, by case law. 
it's not part of any like actual statute. And so um, the House of Representatives at the national level has been talking about drafting a law and you know kind of debating a bill um, to codify the right to abortion, um, which is an incredible step. Okay, so that's uh, it actually sounds great and it's a good way to wrap up. So uh, do you see that happening or do you see anything in particular that's needed to make it happen? <laughs> Um, gosh, I really want to be optimistic and say, yes, I see it happening. Um, but the way that the U.S. government is functioning these days where um, pretty religious, evangelically religious and very conservative, but also just kind of anti the other side, um, I think that the bill may um, pass through the House of Representatives, but not likely the Senate. Um, there will be elections coming up at the end of next year um, for the House of Representatives and the Senate. So depending on what happens there and who gets more control of the Houses of Congress, then there is a chance that it might go through. Um, but as far as what needs to happen, I think that, um, you know, people should certainly keep showing up um, to demonstrations, keep, you know, voicing their anger and dissatisfaction um, with what's happening with abortion rights in individual states, but also in the country. And there is also, you know, the opportunities to be able to contact um, your representatives at the at any level, um, very local, state, national level, um, to voice your concerns and and especially what these laws mean for people's lives, because um, you know the folks and this is the story all over the world. The folks who are making the laws generally don't have a good understanding or feel for um, you know the daily really personal impacts of their decisions on people's lives. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Lee, for agreeing to do this. Thanks for speaking oh, to us.